Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. Um, as the title suggests, I'm going to give you my candid review of the Blossom and Root Wonders of Worlds Beyond Part 1 Oceanography. Um, so as you can see here, I have the parent guide, the laboratory guide, and then I have um, two copies of the student guide, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, I had these printed by Hard Copy HQ, which I... Uh, I was going to say, I think is the preferred printer of Blossom and Root, but I don't know. You could just get, um, they have a really easy ordering system set up. And I think that they have, um, I don't know what the word is. Anyways, um, you just go on their site, create account. It's easy to print. So the first thing I wanted to go through is the parent guide. Um, and if you're not familiar with Blossom and Root, uh, they have all of the subjects are written to work together, but you can still purchase them separately. So this is from the science for level five. Um, and the first part I'm gonna go over here, and this is all on the website, which I'll link below, is the topics that are covered. And so I wanted to start here because um, I've been looking for an oceanography curriculum for a while, um, especially when my since when my kids were little, um, we were able to visit the Marine Mammal Center in Marin County, and you get to see the different animals that are saved and things like that. And I've always thought, wow, it would really be nice to study different things about, you know, marine mammals and the ocean and tide pools and all those things. Um, and so before this came onto the market, um, there was really only, to my knowledge, I could be wrong, right? I don't know everything. But to my knowledge, there was only um, Christian resources for um, marine science. And there's two different ones that I can particularly think of. One of them really covers oceanography, but has uh, Bible passages and things throughout it. Um, so if you're trying to use it in a secular way, it's almost impossible. Um, but it's, you know, it's a very beautiful curriculum. I don't want to say anything against it. I'm just saying if you're not um, a Christian, then it's really challenging. Um, and then I watched a review of another one, and it had said that it wasn't really a coherent ocean curriculum. It was really more about animals. So those were the things that I had um, experienced or learned about before this came out. And then when I heard that um, Christina was working on this, I was just so excited. And I think that you'll agree based on these topics, this is really such an in-depth, um, just so detailed and comprehensive study of oceans and waters and really every aspect that you could think of when you were um, imagining what an ocean science curriculum could be. So that's my number one point um, and why I really love this curriculum after using it with my two boys this year is I feel like you really get a comprehensive education and every single topic there's just so many layers of information that you could further dig into and so many resources and I know that we didn't even use you know a tenth of a percent of the different options that you have so next I'm going to turn to a sample lesson. Um, I'm turning to 15 because that's the one that's included in the sample on the website and I don't want to reveal more than that. Um, so like other wonders in um, Blossom and Root, you have a number of different approaches. So the first thing that you start with, and I'm not going to show you that page because I, like I said, I'm not trying to reveal more than is included. Um, you have key points for each lesson. So this wonder is about kelp forests. So there's seven key points about kelp forests. So the amazing thing about this curriculum is that if you purchase Wonders of Worlds Beyond Oceanography, you don't have to buy anything else. You don't have to buy any other books. You don't have to buy any other materials. You have these points included in your curriculum. That is what you're paying for is what are we learning about this particular topic for this particular lesson, it's all included here. Um, and, you know, eventually it may be the case where I just go ahead and only do that and I don't purchase any of the books. Um, so I really feel like that is an undersung value of this curriculum versus other ones where you have to go buy books, you know, like there's a book list and you have to go get this and that. Um, you really don't. This is really, you could just use this. It's a self-contained curriculum. Um, in addition to that, you have these 10 or so different extension opportunities to um, further dig in or have a visual representation or a kinesthetic representation of the different topics. So the minimalist is the one that we use and 
I think in like all of the science levels, usually get um, an encyclopedia. So this is the spine encyclopedia for um, oceanography. You can see it's listed right here, ocean. Um, and like the animals, the animal kingdom level, it's the animal one. And the astronomy is the space um, book. Uh, and then there's these other options depending on, you know, how many books you want to get, what your budget's like. Um, then you have the book basket. So this is kind of the more traditional like um, morning basket or uh, maybe Charlotte Mason approach where you're getting this different literature based on each lesson. So this is actually what we're going to be doing next year. Um, with the wonders of the animal kingdom and the plant and fungi is I'm really going to be um, sticking to this. And the benefit of this approach, I think, is you can really give a robust weeks long worth of books or lessons to your kids just on this one topic. And that's one of the things that I may or may not get to at the end of this is that I feel that there's so much in each individual lesson that you could really you could even draw it out for a month. It's just there's so many different layers and rabbit trails that you could go on. And you know, she says in the beginning of this, feel free to go on rabbit trails. Um, but this particular topic, I feel there's really a big opportunity for that. Um, next you have for the visual learners. So this is what I do with my boys. Um, we pick one or two of these videos, depending on how long they are. And, um, you know, it's like a mini documentary on whatever the topic is. So, um, I can't remember which one of these we watched cause this was a while ago, but, um, you know, they're really cool. And also like for wonders of the prehistoric world, there's these really cool videos about what happened millions of years ago. And they have, um, you know, recreations with CGI or whatever. And it's just very compelling material. Um, and then next you have, um, from the lab guide. So these are different hands-on activities and I don't know which one of these are in the sample. So I'm not going to share, um, this cause I don't want to, um, misstep or anything, but the point is, is that if you want to create lab opportunities for your children, if you want to do the really hands-on science, which if you're close to an ocean, you could do so much with this. We are not close to an ocean. We're close to mountains and forest. Um, so, you know, even um, in terms of a scavenger hunt, which I'll get to in a bit, like we cannot find, uh, you know, a clam or what have you. Uh, so there's really, you know, this lab guide gives you even additional an additional layer of opportunity um and then same with the you know crafts projects especially if you have kids you know the beauty of this is really you can follow your kids learning style so if you have a kid that loves to build dioramas you could do so much with this um there was another assignment i can't remember which lesson it was for where it said um one of the options was to make a 60 second long add about something. And I thought that that was really cool. And we had been planning to do it, but we were in the charter at that time and we ran out of time before our meeting. So got kind of pushed aside, but I just really feel like there's a lot of creative options. Um, and then that's all for this lesson. So that's an example of what you get. Um, and then the next thing that I wanted to talk about was the scavenger hunt sheets. So I think that these come with every science lesson. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure because I've done most of these and I've gotten them every time. Um, and there's instructions in the curriculum of what to do with them. I have not been the best about making use of them. And then particularly this year, like I said, I don't live near the coast. I can't go find a sandbar or a cliff or whatever. Um, so what I did this year is I thought, you know, I paid to have these printed by Hard Copy HQ. They're so beautiful. I really want to do something with them. Um, and we were still with the charter at the time, so I did need to come up with work samples. So I decided to have my boys pick from one of the two lessons we just finished and use the scavenger hunt um, photos to create a little poster. And so then we used um, the information that was written in the wonder to um, fill it with information. So that was my solution of, I have this really great resource. We just spent a lot of time learning about these different things. How can we make this work for us? And then this is um, the one that my then eight-year-old did about mangroves. And these are the photos. And this is from the um, student book. So, you know, you have these really cool clip art things that are used to demonstrate things. Um, and then he fit every single thing that was on there onto his poster. And, you know, it was a really cool, um, project and my boys, I think really liked it. And it was a change from, um, the usual type of stuff that we do. So, um, that's something that I think, you know, 
I may go back and revisit some of these topics with my boys and develop more projects because I think that this could really help reinforce concepts. And also if you're doing like a school nest notebook, you could easily use these in your pages. Um, I just haven't really, you know, taken the time to think about all the different ways these could be used, but they're really, um, fun and interesting to look at. So that's that part. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, um, is I found, I don't know if this was listed in the curriculum or not, but I was able to find this, um, little packet. It was written by either a state or, um, local park in Louisiana, and it's about salt marshes. And this is one of the topics that's covered. And so I was able to find these materials to reinforce what we were doing. And also they worked really well, um, as a charter sample, like I said. And so I feel like the way that the curriculum is written and the topics are, um, introduced, you could really find supporting materials without too much work. Um, if you need that extra support or you need like a worksheet that you need to turn in or something like that. And, you know, we had considered using this photo from my son's poster and then I decided that the other one looked better from the curriculum. So, um, the reason I introduced this is because there are several different projects in the curriculum, like not worksheets, but templates that you can use. And so I'm going to put a cut here and show you one of the ones that my son did of um, the world oceans, which was a really cool activity in the beginning of this curriculum. And, um, you know, just like I said in the beginning, there's just so much that you can do with it. It's hard to explain unless you, um, you know, are in it. And so the last thing I wanted to say is I think, so this is a student workbook and this has a couple of different pages like layouts. So this is the one that's traditionally used in the younger levels of Blossom and Root. And it's my favorite. Um, I would prefer to have this kept in future levels because then you can really use it with different age students and different levels and things. Um, I did not make a big deal out of these this year. And um, the effort that my kids put in was not perfect, not Instagram worthy, um, because we really focused on the visual approach and the discussions that we had and things like that. And then later extension projects. Um, but so I just wanted to share these two little ones, um, that my boys did. This one's for tides, which you can see is lesson eight. And this one's for coast, which is lesson nine. Um, one thing I would say is if I was doing this over again, what I would probably do is have the lesson on a different day than the notebooking, which I think it may even tell you to do that. And I think people do that in general, but I was trying to get everything done in one day because, you know, sometimes if you don't, then just time passes on and then you never get to it and then you're behind. Um, but I feel like this is just such a beautiful level and there's so much opportunity to create art and to have that as like a keepsake. So the one thing I would say, and this is, has nothing to do with the review is just, um, if you're going to be doing this level, I would recommend breaking up the different um, parts. So maybe have the lesson in one part, have the notebooking another day, and then have like a, a lab or a craft the third day. Um, because I think you could really get a lot more out of um, the curriculum and reinforce the things that your kids are learning. So um, that is my candid review of the Blossom and Root Oceanography. I really enjoyed doing it this year. Um, I wish that there was another science level that we could do next year. I'm going to be sad. This will be the first year um, not having um, a Blossom and Root level for my older son to do with us. But we will be doing the um, level two and three plants and animals next year. So that will be good um, until the next thing comes out. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, please feel free to leave me your comments um, below or if you have any questions or you feel like I didn't show you something you really wanted to see, please let me know. Um, otherwise, if you like this video and you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and thanks for watching.